Hi, and welcome to Conan Exiles Age of Calamitous. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to learn Blood Magic. The way to learn Blood Magic has been changed after the December 8 update. We will also talk about ascensions and how to upgrade your Blood Magic and locations of the secret spells as well. So, if you think this guide would be of use to you, sit back, enjoy, and don't forget to subscribe and like the video so that we can share it to those who might need this updated guide. Just like any magic in the Age of Calamitous, you can get a quest from Grandmaster Ferengar to start learning the blood magic. So, it should be a given that you have already learned the ancient arts by doing its quest or just by clicking on the Learn the Ancient Arts button on the left. And at the same time, you need to be level 60 in order for you to get the quest for the blood magic. And the first thing that you need to do for the magic blood, darkness within, you have to find and learn demonic uh, attunement from Necromancer Felikai Rothart. And he is located inside the Well of Skellos. Alright, so we're already here uh, near the entrance to the Well of Skellos. It's in the Volcano Biome. Just in case you're wondering where it is, it's in G14 on the map. Right here. Well of Skellos. So, I'm currently in Cloak mode, so they're not gonna attack me, but most of the mobs here are um, aggro, so be careful. And I say most because some are not actually aggro. I'm gonna show you later on. These are aggros, you don't have to fight them, just run past them. And then just jump into the portal. Alright, so once you're already in the Well of Skellos, you can see Alexander fall for a time quest. And you will see Hyborian Fighter 3s, like a lot of them. They're not aggro, so if you don't attack them, they will not attack you. Alright, these are aggro mobs. And then you take the left path. And once you're already here in this structure, you take the, the right path. Alright, and once you see this fire hole, Necromancer Felikai is this NPC right here. Alright. You talk to him. Magic Blood Darkness Within. Complete quest. At the same time, click on Learn Demonic Attunement. Click goodbye and then press E again to talk to him and he will give you the second quest that you need to do. Soul Sacrifice. So make sure you read the details of the quest so that you will know exactly what to do next. Attune to the Blood Shrine located on a raised platform in the unnamed city at D6. So this is the time that you will actually interact with the shrine and you will not die anymore because you have already attuned yourself to the demonic attunement if you go directly to the blood shrine in the unnamed city and attune to it without learning demonic attunement you're going to die of our overload so that's why you have to do this quest first and go to the unnamed city attune to the blood shrine and then come back here to tag the quest completed so now we're going to the unnamed city. All right, so we're already in the unnamed city. It's here on the map in D6. I am right next to the citadel of the Triumvirate. There we go. And the platform that our quest is describing pertains to that location right there. So that is our target location. The Shrine for the Blood Magic is located on top of that structure. Now, since this is the Unnamed City, it's going to be a bit dark. So make sure that in your settings, you pump up the Gamma to 3. It's going to help you out with your visibility. 
All right, so once you get to this location, as you can see, you have one of the vanilla bosses in the unnamed city and also two corrupted grunts. You may have to get rid of them first before you can climb up to the platform. And this is just one of the reasons why the acquisition for the quest for the blood magic requires you to be level 60. Now, the most advisable way of going on top of the platform is through one of the pillars on the right side, right here. So all you gotta do is to climb up here. And the reason why we chose this because we have tried the other platforms and this is the only platform where they don't aggro right away. So the concentration of the Servants of Wraith on the platform is less on this side of the structure but you have to be careful you may have to clear the skeletons that are um, located in this area you just have to make sure that you don't go too far there we go that you will aggro the other mobs in here especially the scourge boss and the scourge reapers because all of those are hilarian plague All right, so once you're already on top, as you can see, you have Servants of Wraith all over the place. And more reason why this quest has required you to be at least level 60. And these guys don't joke around. They pack a lot of damage. So you have to make sure that you're all prepared when you come here to attune to the Blood Magic Shrine. All right, so I have already attuned myself to the Blood Magic Shrine, and I already got the Dark Arts of Blood Magic. Now, this place is very difficult to get on and to make sure that you um, clear these guys first before attuning. You have to make sure that you check your feats and make sure that the Blood Magic is already there. So we have the Blood Magic one, and we also have the shadow fire level one and we can already craft our altar for the blood magic the shattered crystal so time to build the shattered crystal create the blood magic weapon and create the ammo but before that in order for us to build the shattered crystal we need to get the tome of blood magic so we need to go back to necromancer felikai and report the completion of our quest and Felikai is gonna tell us where to go next to get the Tome of the Blood Magic. Alright, so we're back to Necromancer Felikai in the Will of Skelos. Report the Soul Sacrifice, complete quest. Alright, so it's completed. We say goodbye and then we click it again. And then now we take the Tome of Blood Magic. So this is the item that we need. And we can get it in K9, the passage. It's going to give us this XP and it's also going to allow us to get the Tome of Blood Magic. So that will be the last thing that we will need so that we can already craft our altar. And then after crafting our altar, we can already craft the magic weapon itself. Alright, so before we jump right in and go to K9, the passage and get the Tome of Blood Magic. We need something in order for us to purchase the Tome of Blood Magic, the item itself. And if we fail to bring the required materials, then you will have to redo the whole thing. And trust me, when you say that later on, you don't want to do the whole thing all over again. So you need to prepare five Emerald Shards. And in order for you to make shards out of uncut emerald gems, you need to go to your gem crafting bench. Here are the uncut emeralds, and then you should be able to craft the emerald shards. However, it's not showing up yet because you have to make sure you go to your feats, you go to survival, 
And then under the art of the craft, you need to unlock the gem crafting feats. So this will enable you to craft the gem crafting bench and also able to convert the uncut gems into shards and to its actual form. So unlocking it now and it should already show. All right, so this is what we need and we need five of these. There we go. And this is what I need to make sure I will bring to get the Tome of Blood Magic. All right, so I'm already in K9, the passage. And make sure to pump your gamma to its maximum settings for better visibility. So the NPC who's going to give us the Tome of Blood Magic is on that platform. This place is going to be really, really difficult. Especially you have to deal with a, an Ilarican or Scourge boss. And then all those spiders that you can see, those are Ilarican Plague as well. That spider on the ceiling is purely decorative. So you don't have to worry about that. But that's just one of, you know, the problems in this cave. Because in order for you to go up onto those platforms hanging by the ceiling, you have to use those round things like a trampoline. So you have to bounce from here to that platform, from that platform bounce to that platform right there, and then from that platform bounce to the final platform where you can buy or you can exchange your emerald shards with the Tome of blood magic so it's gonna take you a lot of tries there we go so this is better done with a team so some of your teammates will be aggroing the spider so that you will be free to do what you need to do and please do not bring your thralls or pets in here if they are not yet Ilarican immune or at least a protection. If you will bring your thralls in here and you fail the first jump, that's 100% death on your fall. And all your thralls will be left here dying with the Ilarican plague. So please do not bring your thralls or pets if, you know, you love them. All right. So I'm going to be trying the first um, trampoline. So what you need to do is you make sure that your character is facing the right direction. It doesn't matter where your cursor is pointing, down or up. You just have to make sure that it's facing the right direction. Alright, so I would have taken damage there, but I'm not going to die. And then, as you can see, um, since I'm in god mode, I didn't take any damage. But it would have been ideal if I hit the, the pillar and just spacebar so that I wouldn't take any damage. Now, there are two ways that you can actually um, deal with the spider. So it's either kill it. If you have an Ilarican protection, you can kill this one. But if you don't have an Ilarican protection yet, I advise you don't kill that. And you just, you know, go around. And trying to, you know, try to dodge it. The attack, the basic attacks will not be that damaging. But if you really need to kill it, then just kill it. And just make sure that you keep an eye on your next target. So the next target will be that location. So don't get too near or else it's going to bounce you right away. Bounce you off right away. So you make sure you're facing the right direction. And then there you go. And make sure that you land, uh, you hit, I mean, um, the pillar. You're aiming on the pillar so that you don't suffer any damage. But if you suffer damage, there's no enemy here anyway. So just heal yourself for the next jump. So the next jump will be the waterfalls. So make sure that you hit the waterfalls. And then you can actually just um, swim down or just fall down. Or right, I'm going to show you how it's done. So make sure that you're facing the right direction again. And there you go. Hit the water. Make sure you hit the water. 
So as you can see, the breathing bar when you are underwater shows up. So if you're able to do this correctly, you should be able to swim down. Or if you can't do so, you will just let yourself you know, drop and you will just um, suffer some damage. So this is the NPC that you need to find. Interact. And you can get the blood, sorry, the Tome of Blood Magic for 5 Emerald Shards. So can you imagine if you did all those things? If you did all the dying and bouncing, and eventually when you got here, you don't have the 5 Emerald Shards with you. You have to do the whole thing all over again. And that might frustrate you. So that's why you have to bring them beforehand. There we go. Just to confirm... I already have the Tome of Blood Magic with me. Now, the good thing is, when you're done here, you don't have to deal with the Ilarican Spiders anymore. You just have to bounce off. So I have to make sure I'm facing the right direction. There we go. I was not yet facing the right direction. And for those who are familiar with Bobby's Sanctuary, this is the place. And all I got to do, since there are enemies here as well, I just have to make sure to run like a lunatic and exit this dungeon all right so now that we already have our tome of blood magic we can already create or craft our altar so the altar for the blood magic is the shattered crystal and you may have to do a lot of grinding for the other materials so we already have the tome of blood magic onyx Emerald and Onyx Composite. Alright, so crafting. There we go. Alright. I'm just gonna place it here. It's right next to my Altar of the Sun. And there you go. We can already create the level 1 Blood Magic Weapon. The level 1 ammo that we can use um, with it. And the harvesting tool for the blood magic power gem. So it's called the demonic siphoning. Alright, so let's start by crafting the weapon itself. So it requires Tome of Blood Magic, 5 Weathered Skull, and 10 Blood. The good thing is you get to use the Tome of Blood Magic again and again because it doesn't get consumed. So, um, if you're making your magic weapon, or upgrading the magic weapon, or in creating the altar itself, this does not get consumed. Alright, so let's craft it. And it will not progress right away, and some people actually think that it's bugging out. But one thing that you need to learn about um, the altars, or the magic altars in AOC, they require fuel. And for the Shattered Crystal... It requires emerald for fuel. So it could be uncut, the shard, or the actual form. You can use that as a fuel. Playing, and it should take some time for the weapon to be crafted. Alright, so our weapon is done. Let's craft our ammo. So we need ammo to make the weapon work. So we need demon blood. So that's why I have a lot of demon blood here. You need to have a lot of demon blood if you want to create a lot of ammo. You also need uncut rubies. A lot of uncut rubies. And then craft. I'm just going to try and craft one. So it's not going to play automatically. So don't freak out. Just click on play. And once this is already done, this will give you 10 ammos in one craft. There you go. Alright. So all you gotta do now, put the weapon in your one of your hotkeys. And then, just drag the ammo. So don't forget to bring it. Drag the ammo to the weapon itself. And you should be ready to use the blood magic. Blood magic is arguably one of the most powerful magic in the Age of Calamities. So it's a very rewarding type of weapon that you can use. And that's the reason why it has to be in the mid-game for the um, Age of Calamities content. So now, since we already have our weapon, let's talk about 
upgrades on how to make our magic more powerful. So in order for you to level up your magic itself, and at the same time, for your next tier of magic weapon to be unlocked, you need to do ascensions. And in the AOC magic, you will be able to ascend four times. However, doing ascensions will require you to get volume one, two, three, and four ascension books or tomes that you need to loot or to get around the exiled lands. At the same time, you should collect blood power gems in order for you to do your ascensions. And you can only collect blood power gems if you are using the demonic siphoning tool in harvesting corpses. But not all the mobs in the exiled map will give you the blood power gem. So later on, I will pinpoint the mobs that will give you the blood power gems for you to be able to use for your ascension. So let's craft the demonic siphoning tool for now. So we need Ilarican powder, onyx composite, and we also need rubies. So we already have it here. And then crafting. Press play so that it will start its progress. Now, if you're wondering, Onyx compo um, Composite can be crafted in the Master Furnace. So you need to grind for these things for you to create Onyx Composite. Now, for the Ilarican Powder, you need to go to the Alchemy Desk. And make sure that you unlock your apothecary in your feats. So in my situation, I already unlocked that when I was doing the fire magic tutorial. So I already unlocked apothecary and that will allow me to um, craft Ilarican powder. Now the Ilarican powder will require you unstable substance, widow's leaf, and black lotus powder. Now, there should be a lot of guides, and I think I also have some videos um, for these resources, so feel free to check it out. Alright, our siphoning tool is done. And here's a tip. Since um, a lot of people are actually confused if they will use a tool upgrade kit or a reinforcement kit. One thing you need to know about the harvesting tools for all the magic it has a fixed rate. So if it has a fixed rate already, putting an advanced tool upgrade kit or whatever or how high the tool upgrade kit can be, it does not change its yield numbers. So since it's already fixed, make sure that you use reinforcement kits to increase your harvesting tools durability. There we go. At least you will be able to use that for a long time. You can harvest blood power gems from scourge bosses, scourge mobs, all the AOC undead, Zainaris, servants of Zainaris, Wraith, and all the servants of Wraith. You can also get blood power gems from devil bears, the cubs and the bosses. Van Ghul NPCs and Shadirian NPCs. You can get two blood power gems from the bosses Scourge bosses, Zainaris, Raids, and the boss devil bears. There we go. Maximum of two only. It doesn't give you any yield further. And you can get one blood power gem from the ordinary mobs. You can also get just one power gem from Shadirian NPCs, Van Gogh NPCs, the Devil Bear Cubs, the Servants of Grave, and the Servants of Zainaris. So to put it simply, if it's a Scourge boss, if it's an AOC Undead, Zainaris and Wraith, and the boss Devil Bears, they will give you two power gems. So you can hit them twice. But if it's just the, the ordinary mob or the ordinary NPC, 
then you can only get one blood power gem from each, regardless on how many times you hit them. However, the early game Van Gogh right outside of the faction hall doesn't give any blood power gems. So that's one thing that is noteworthy when you are already getting your blood power gems. Now let's talk about the locations for the Tome of Demonic Ascensions, Volume 1, 2, 3, and 4, for you to upgrade your magic level. The first Tome of Ascension, which is the Volume 1, is located in B11 in the Mounds of the Dead. Just look for the Cursed Mound right here in this hut. And the NPC that you're looking for is Warlock Sodarian Hilburn. It will require 10 Blood of the Devil Bear, 15 Cursed Undead Remains, and 75 Dragon Fern Plant in exchange for the Tome of Demonic Ascension Volume 1. Now, once you already have the Tome of Demonic Ascension Volume 1, and you also have 25 Blood Power Gem, you can already go back to the Unnamed City to do your first Ascension. The second Tome of Demonic Ascension can be looted from the Scourge Snake Boss. Scourge Bosses spawns in the Unnamed City. Some of the locations are also outside the Unnamed City. And with the latest update, last December 8th, there are some Scourge Bosses spawning in the southern part of the map as well. But if you want to see an in-depth guide on the Scourge Boss locations, I will leave the link in the description down below for you to check. Now, the Ascension for Demonic Tome Volume 2 can only be looted from the Snake Scourge Boss. There you go. So once you already have the Tome of Demonic Ascension Volume 2, and you also have 70 Blood Power Gems, you can now go back to the Blood Magic Shrine and do your second Ascension. Now, just take note that this only requires for you to be level 40, so this is something that you can do right away. The Tome of Demonic Ascension Volume 3 can be acquired in K9 in the passage. So this time, you have to go in there and actually kill the Scourge Spider Boss. As what we have learned earlier, the Scourge Spider Boss is going to produce Ilarican Plague when it dies, as well as the other creatures like the Dwellers and the big black spiders. So this is going to be challenging, but nonetheless, this is where you can get the Demonic Ascension Volume 3. Once you already have the Tome of Demonic Ascension Volume 3, and you also have 150 Blood Power Gems, you can now go back to the Blood Magic Shrine to do your third Ascension. At the same time, you need to be level 80 for you to successfully do the Ascension. And just for your information, the Scourge Spider Boss can only spawn in this location. And the last Tome of Demonic Ascension, Volume 4, is back in the Unnamed City, specifically in the Citadel of the Triumvirate. So all you need to do is go inside. You can find the Tome of Demonic Ascension, Volume 4, right here. Now, once you already have the Tome of Demonic Ascension Volume 4, and you also have 300 Blood Power Gems, and you are already 120 in level, you can now do your final Ascension for the Blood Magic. Now, FYI, the Tome of Demonic Ascension Volumes are not something that you can consume every time you ascend, so you should be able to share this with your clanmates. So now that you already know how to learn black magic, how to upgrade it, doing ascensions, now let's talk about the secret spells that you can find in the whole Exiled map. So the first one that you can find is in the Well of Skellos entrance. 
on the fourth level. This will require you to be level 80 and have already done the third ascension. And here you go. Once you have done that, you have to make sure to check your feet. And then there you go, black heart. So you're now able to use the black heart spell. You can find another secret spell on top of the citadel of the Triumvirate in the unnamed city. So the easiest access is this way. Here we go. Lost Sanity. Check the feats. And now you have already acquired the Lost Sanity spell. The next secret spell that you can learn is in H6 in the arena. Make sure to avoid the world boss as much as possible. And once you already buy this tablet, go to the left. And here's the secret magic blood spell. I have learned minions of the underworld. Just to make sure, check the feats all the time. And here you go, we have learned the minions of the underworld. The next secret spell location is near the actual boss for the Well of Skellos. Okay, so it's right here. Excuse me. And there you go. I have learned the essence of evil. Checking my feet just to make sure. Essence of evil. And the last secret blood magic spell is in the faction hall and it's only exclusive for the cold embrace. And the reason for that is it's inside the cold embrace faction hub. And here it is. There we go. You have learned a new feat, Necromancy. So again, this is only exclusive for the Cold Embrace faction. Checking the feats. And there you go. So by learning Necromancy, I will be able to craft the Servant of Wraith. So this is an Ilarican Immune Pet and Zephyrus Undead Horse Mount. Now, in order for me to take advantage of the necromancy that's exclusive to the Cold Embrace and craft the Servant of Wraith as my pet and also the Undead Zephyrus Horse for my mount, I need to build the Shrine of the Harbinger. Now, the thing is that the Shrine of the Harbinger is very difficult to achieve because of this required material. It requires the skull of the Harbinger and the skull of the Harbinger can only be looted from one of the AOC bosses and that is the Harbinger himself. So it is necessary to build the Shrine of the Harbinger because our Shattered Crystal is not able to craft 
the secret spells, and the necromancy items. There we go. So, in order to progress and optimize the usage of the blood magic, we really have to build the Shrine of the Harbinger, and we really need to defeat Harbinger to get that required material. Okay, so in order for you to go where Harbinger is at, you need to be in I2, because Harbinger is here in the Temple of Harbinger, of course, in H1. So, this is the entrance from the desert. And it's just going to be straight shot. And to avoid any spoilers, I'm just going to cut the video. And I'm just going to show you where Harbinger is. So that I will not spoil the fun for you guys to fight through the mobs that you need to defeat. In order for you to get to the Harbinger temple. Right here. Okay, so this is where Harbinger is. That's him. So he's guarded by... Zainaris and the servants of Zainaris and not to spoil anything there's something more behind me in this video so just discover it on your own and have fun with your friends so let me just kill Harbinger right away and here we go we can get the skull of the Harbinger for you to build the shrine of the Harbinger to take advantage of the necromancy items and also the secret spells. And that is all for this guide, you guys, and I do hope you find this helpful. If you do, please leave a like and smash that subscribe button for fresh tips and tricks for Conan Exiles Age of Calamities. You can also leave a comment below for requests of guides and walkthroughs that you want us to cover or any recommendations on how we can make our content better in our future videos. And as always, thank you so much for watching and bye for now, you guys.